Today we're going to be making a shark collage. So we're going to need a large paper and the shark that we painted last time. The shark that we painted last time it was mixed using gray. So we're going to take a black crayon and first outline it. You're going to want to go along all the outside of your shark. I went along the back. I'm doing the shark fin. Go over those gills. I have half of my shark just like this. I did that pencil line. You don't have to add that one. I also want to go over my teeth. And I'm going to cut this out so the mouth looks open. But if you wanted to make the whole mouth black, you could certainly connect that line right there. Using my scissors and glue that I brought to my table, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my shark. I want to cut right along those lines. I'm going to cut around the mouth first. If I want to go back later and cut out the mouth, I can do that too. Put your scraps off to the side. I like to make a pile to send to the recycling bin a little bit later. After we're done with our cutout, we're going to make some waves onto your paper. When you make waves, they can be like zigzag lines or bumpy lines. I like to make wavy lines that have a little curve to them. My shark is ready to go for a little bit later. I'm going to get rid of this bottom edge to make it look all gray. I'll put my scissors back into the scissor cup and I'll go ahead and glue this down in just a little bit. For my waves, as you see on the smart board slides, we have some blues and greens. I like to use these for waves and zigzags. So just like this, you can go zigzag all the way across your page. Make a nice bold line that will stay there even when we paint over the top of it. I like to use blues and greens because when I see the ocean, those are the ones that shine to me. If you see some other colors, like especially during a sunset, you can use some oranges and reds and purples, but we're going to stick with mostly blue and green here. We can add more color when we are painting. Even though I did zigzags, I'm also doing these wavy lines, and I'll do a wavy line up top here. There's several other examples that you can see on the TV. Now I'll need to grab my shark. I'll flip that over. I'm going to take my glue stick. Remember to put your glue a penny over the top. It's kind of hard to see, but just like the size of a penny. You're going to make a picture frame around the outside. This is a triangle picture frame. I'm going around the whole outside, and then I like to do, to do an X across the center. Don't forget to get a little glue on your uh, flipper. What is, what is that? Shark fin, sorry. I'll put that shark either on the bottom, looks like he's coming off the page like this, or over on the side like this, like he's swimming. I think I want to go with this way. So I'm going to put the shark sideways down like this. Hold it down for about 10 seconds. You can kind of smooth out that glue when you're going. All right, after we've held it for about 10 seconds, I have that on my page. I can recycle my scraps. I want to remember to put the cap back on my glue, put the glue back into the glue bin. Now I'm ready for paint. I can go get my paintbrush and water cup. Remember to fill that about halfway with water. You can also get your paint palette. Remember we will share this with a partner. And uh, for these tempera cakes, you're going to need to get them a little bit wet. So that's where the water comes in handy. So I'm going to take my paint palette and start painting right around this area. I can paint my entire page, but I want to get it full of color. So what I'll do is I'll dip my brush in there a couple times, get it wet, and then remember to go over the paint palette a few times to get it a little wet, get started. And then I would say grab it about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. We can lay down some nice painterly lines right on the page. I start out with some wavy lines of one color to start with, and I can go back and add more later. But wait, my brush is getting really dry. One thing I can do is a quick dip in the water that is super fast like this, quick dip, and I can spread out that paint even more. I don't want to get my paper too wet because then it will bleed through to the other side, but getting it wet will spread out that paint very nicely. I can get a little bit more blue on my brush, keep spreading it out. Now that that blue is starting to get wet, I don't have to dip back into the water cup as much. I can just go right into that blue, keep painting over the top. Now I need to get my brush clean. I'll go dip, dip, spin, 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 dip, dip, spin, spin, spin. That will be nice and clean, ready to go so that I can use a new color. I'm going to go with green this time, and I'm going to go green right next to where I painted that blue. My brush is super dry, so I'm going to want to get it a little bit more wet, get that temper cake nice and wet so that your that paint will spread out easily. As I'm going, the blue and the green will start to mix. 
and make more of an aqua color. It would be a good idea for you to focus on mixing your colors in the background. For the mouth, you could even paint some black in this area or blue like he's swimming through the water. Here are some other great examples from kindergartners in your school. Excellent blue-green background. They made their shark a different way, but that looks great. This person had a good idea. They made sand on the bottom of the ocean and they had a little buried treasure, treasure along with the starfish. And the last example we'll take a look at right here. Really good color mixing. They said it was like a nighttime sunset. So that is your shark collage. When you are all done with this, you are going to clean your brushes by putting them into the bucket in the sink. You're going to return your paint palette and you're going to bring this right to the drying rack.